take the oath, Senator? I am. I, Barack Hussein Obama, I, do Barack, solemnly swear. I, Barack Hussein Obama, do solemnly swear. Hello, I'm Chelsea Cross reporting from Teen Talk Live, and I'm here in West Palm Beach, Florida, at the airport, about to embark on my journey to Washington, D.C. I am so excited. My flight leaves in about 30 minutes, and I'm going to the presidential inauguration. I'm going to see Ob Barack Obama be sworn into the White House. People to People program is an amazing program where teens get to go all over the country and experience wonderful things, and I get to go to the inauguration. I'll be one of the three million people at the inauguration. I'll be looking like an ant on the TV screen, but I'm so excited. I'm going from sunny Florida to really cold Washington, and I just can't wait. Hello, good morning. I'm Chelsea, and it is the second day of our People to People trip. We are now in Maryland, actually at the Marriott Convention Center. Our first stop today is we are going to hear Mary Eisenhower and Ken Walsh speak. I have the honor to be sitting next to Mary Eisenhower, who is the, great, the granddaughter of President Dwight Eisenhower, our 34th president. You were born during Dwight Eisenhower's first term. How did that affect your, your, your family? How did that affect your relationship with him? Well, he was a very knee-slapping grandfather. I mean, he, he, uh, I didn't really realize he was anything uh, special until I got, uh, besides being special to me, but I mean, uh, until I got into school and people started treating me a little differently. And that's kind of one of the residual things when, uh, you know, when, when you're a family in that situation, things are a little different for you. Yeah. Were you able to be close with him because he was so busy and traveling? Did you have that sturdy relationship with him while you were a child? We were a very close-knit family. And I've often wondered because, you know, you don't always hear about kids being overly close to their grandparents and that kind of thing. But we were extremely close, and um, I think when you get in a position like he was in, there's only so many people you can trust, and family is one of them. So we were together a lot. So your grandfather started People to People program in 1956. What was his ultimate mission? Um, well, world peace, I, I, you know, as, as overwhelming as that sounds. But he, he really believed that if the everyday people got together, uh, that they would find a way to live in piece uh, different or not. What are you doing to keep your grandfather's legacy still in the program to really accomplish what he wanted but also p do what you want and for the future? Well I think what amazes me is um, you know since I came with people to people I've of course uh, read up on a lot of the historic writings you know his um, his philosophies and things like that in the beginning of the program and it's almost as though I've gotten to know um, you know, three men, you know, the, the, the one that I grew up with, the one that I learned about in school, and now the people-to-people -people grandfather. Um, and it's, it's not hard to keep his legacy in it because his writings were almost prophetic. I'm one of the lucky people I've been able to do in my career what I set out to do long ago. I always wanted to cover national politics and the presidency, and I've gotten to do it. And um, so it's a, it's a combination of, I hope, some talent and some luck uh, that I've been able to cover the White House for 22 years. Were you always interested in politics as you were when you were young? Yeah, my family was always interested in politics. Uh, we come from New York City originally, and then New Jersey, and then I spent a number of years in Colorado. And uh, so I've always been interested in politics, and the White House is the perfect place for somebody who has that interest. And you've covered numerous presidency, Reagan, Clinton, the current President Bush. Are you going to be covering Obama's? Yes, I'll be covering Obama now, and I'll be covering the inauguration, um, be right there uh, on the scene. And uh, so it to be fascinating because there's so much excitement associated with Obama. But on the other hand, he has so many serious problems to deal with. So there's, a, there's sort of a good news, bad news. People have a lot of hope for him, but at the same time, people are really worried about the future. And that's, I think, going to be a real important story in the next year. So when you say you cover the stories, does that mean you get the good and the bad with each president? Right, yeah. Well, we do. Well, I work for U.S. News and World Report, and I've written four books now. And what I try to do is to be just straightforward and uh, explaining what a president's doing, what a president's trying to do, and how successful a president is, and give a sense of what the president's like as a person. So there's a whole range of things that I try to do. But I'm not a partisan. I'm one of the old school reporters who tries to call it as I see it without taking sides. Do you get a lot of one-on-one on one time with the presidents? Well, you know, we used to get more one-on-one -on -one time with presidents than we do now in the White House press corps. Under President Bush, uh, the, that faded. Uh, he uh, was not as interested in one-on-one -on -one time with the press corps. I think Obama will be more interested. 
uh, especially as he starts out, letting the country get to know him better through the media. Now, how do you think Obama being sworn into the White House on Tuesday is going to affect our country? Well, I think people, there's two uh, points about Obama being sworn in. One, people have a tremendous amount of expectation for him. They really uh, hope that he succeeds, both Republicans and Democrats, because the problems we have are so serious. On the other hand, people are worried about the future. And so there's a lot of concern that, um, you know, maybe the answers won't be there. But people are willing to give Obama some time to figure this out. So I think he's going to have quite a long period where people... Um, support him and give him a chance to see what he can do. Good morning. I'm Chelsea Cross from Teen Talk Live. This is our third day of our Washington trip. We are right in front of the Ford Theater. If you can see behind me, that is where President Abraham Lincoln was shot. And actually, our bus is to the right of me. We were up really early this morning, pitch black outside, really cold. And if we walk over here, you can see the Hard Rock actually passed that truck. That's where we had our delicious breakfast this morning, tater tots and French toast. What can get more fattening than that? And over here, we have where Lincoln was brought when he was shot. I mean, I, it, it doesn't really make sense why they didn't bring him to a hospital. They brought him to a house. And now you can actually visit the house from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. to see where he was brought when he passed away. We are going to be seeing so many more monuments today, so many great sites. Last night we were at the Capitol building. We were also at the Jefferson Memorial. We didn't have the camera because it was so cold and it was really dark outside. But today during the day, we're going to be filming everything and we're going to have a great day. And we'll see you later. I'm here with Miss Pam Jones, the delegation manager, our delegation manager, and a fabulous tour guide. Thank you for making this so fun, Pam. You're very welcome. My pleasure. So I wanted to know how you got involved with People to People and how you heard about it. Okay. I became involved with People to People because of a friend of mine who is a tour guide here in Washington, D.C., and he told me about this program. So I did my work one week with People to People, and I was hooked. And I've been uh, working now with the program for three years, about three years, and that means I work spring and fall, and um, I just really, really enjoy it. So I've been doing it for quite some time now. Yes. Now, this is only our second day of the trip, but yesterday we were on the bus for a very long time, and there was not a moment of silence because you knew every building, every street. How do you know so much about Washington and history? Well, I think one thing is because I just... I, I just kind of soak in the history. And because I have a passion for it, I love our nation's capital. It started back when I was your age. I came here on a trip, in high, a high school trip, and I said, you know, I want to live here one day. And I love the history. I love our nation. I love our nation's capital. And it's great fun for me to be able to share with uh, young delegates all about our nation's history. So because you're such a history fan, I'm, I'm sure you're so excited for tomorrow. So how do you feel to be witnessing such a monumental day? Well, I think I'm very blessed to be able to do that. And I think that it's even more exciting that I get to share it with others. So for me, this is a very historical inauguration. And, of course, we talk about all the other presidents and, and their inaugurations. But this one, to be able to experience it, this, I must tell you, is my first inauguration. I usually tend to stay home and watch it on television. <laughs> but this year, I am thrilled to have the opportunity to be there firsthand. I'm so excited. And what's some uh, of the events planned for the rest of the day today? Oh, we have an exciting day today. We are going to be visiting Ford's Theater, and uh, we're standing here in front of the Peterson House where President Lincoln did uh, passed away. After that, we are going to be visiting the World War II Memorial. Uh, we'll also be seeing the Washington Monument, the FDR Memorial. We are also going to be going to Mount Vernon today, which is George Washington's estate, and we'll visit the, his home and gardens there. And uh, later, we'll be having uh, the opportunity to visit the memorials at the west end of the mall, the Lincoln Memorial, the um, uh, Korean Memorial, and the Vietnam Memorial. We have a jam-packed day, so we might as well get started, and uh, we'll keep you updated for the rest of the day. It's snowing. Anything else? Eat one